Welcome to the Wachendorf Projector Tool tutorial. Today we will learn about the basics of JavaScript and its usage. First of all, why do we need JavaScript? You may already have learned some functionalities of the Wachendorf Projector Tool. And while there are very many, at some point you will have ideas that go beyond that. And this is where JavaScript can really help you to, to get the ideas that you want. First, I want to show you how you can execute JavaScript. Mainly, JavaScript are executed at certain events. I have a little example project here with a button. And you can see here, next to the Properties tab that you already know, there is an Events tab. And here you have all the events that are specific to the, to the object that is currently selected. So, for example, for the button you have on press, on release, on long press, and so on. Let me use the on release event as an example. And here you can put a script that will be executed whenever this button is pressed or released. Another important event is in the variable manager. I have an example variable here. When I open the manager, Again, next to the properties are the events, and here you have the event on value change by owner. This means whenever this variable changes its value, this script will be called, which can be very helpful, for example, to do some calculations that include this variable. Also, you can execute scripts when the, when the can communication is breaking down. I have an example mapping here and you see again next to the properties are the events here you have the on receive timeout action so when the when this message is not received anymore this a script can be called for example to open an, an alarm and you also have the on receive timeout resolved to close the alarm again Sometimes you don't want scripts to be called only at certain events, but you will want to execute them regularly. Here you have three ways to do this. The first is when you click on the project name, you have the event on project repeat. This is an event that is called automatically every 100 milliseconds. So here you put a, you have a script that can be called 10 times a second. If you need it slower, you can enter, for example, a 5 here, and it will only be executed every 500 milliseconds. This script will be called wherever you are in the project. As long as the project is started, the script will be executed. There is a similar event on page repeat. The same functionality, but the script will only be executed as long as you are on a certain page. Sometimes you may only want to execute scripts regularly but not so often and there's a nice trick that you can do if you use the on value change events for example of the real-time clock seconds you have an, a cyclic script that will be executed every second or every minute every hour or maybe even every day what else is important you know there are variables in the P client, for example, the one I created here. In JavaScript, you of course also have variables, but you cannot access or change the P client variables directly in JavaScript. This is very important. They are completely separate worlds. When this event on release of the button is executed, the script will be called and it is absolutely independent of what's happening in the p-client. There are functions, of course, to read and write uh, such p-client variables. We will see them in the next tutorial. But it's very important to understand that you cannot access those variables directly. What's also very important, I talked about the cyclic scripts here on project repeat, on page repeat. While they can be very, very helpful, Keep in mind that whatever you write in those scripts will be executed 10 times a second. So you should really only put code there that is really absolutely necessary. 